custom CNC machine plates, perfect 3D printed holders, and homemade PCB, these were the ingredients to create the perfect robotic chassis. But then suddenly, a young man in a propeller hat added standardized design rules, and the open robotic platform was born. But before I show you that, let's go to my beginnings and the first robot I've ever built for some contrast because that one was built out of cardboard and it is pretty hilarious. It was a piece of cardboard with some electronics punched through the cardboard and soldered as it was a protoboard, that was my dad's idea and considering that we had no idea that protoboards or breadboards exist at that point, I think we did a really good job. I'm still keeping this one to remember my beginnings and to show you that any beginning, even the one with cardboard as a PCB, is better than nothing. Of course, later I used some normal chassis and built bigger and more complex robots with better electronics, programs and mechanics. All of the videos about this can be found on my YouTube channel right here. The problem is that the appetite grows as you build, so I really wanted to build bigger and more complex robots. For that, you need bigger and more complex chassis. And then you face a problem, now instead of focusing on programming and electronics, there is a lot of basic CAD design. Even though it's basic, figuring all the various details up front is challenging and very time consuming, but that problem can be solved with modularity. And in this case, with my open source project, Open Robotic Platform, ORP in short, is a set of design rules and easy to use website where you can download and share parts compatible with ORP. All holders, attachments and plays work together so you can reuse parts between the robots and easily modify as you wish. That's the idea. Now let's look at how to make it. Plates are the basic building blocks and you can make this out of anything you want. For this robot I machined them out of 6mm plywood on Indie Mill, my DIY CNC machine, there is more info in the description, but any other manufacturing method will work as well. You can cut it with a laser like I did for my Mini Mars rover, you can 3D print it like I did for the smaller but similar chassis also made according to the ORP. If you don't have an access to such machines, but still want to make one, you can even easily make it by hand if you are patient enough. Marking and drilling all the holes by hand will be time consuming, but if you do it with good precision, the result should be good enough. I plan to make kits of the smaller chassis, plates would be cut out of steel and powder coated and there will be 3D printed connectors and motor holders in the kit. Do you think that this is a good idea? Would you like to buy one? Let me know in the comments, it would be a similar size to the one I used in my machine learning robot video, this robot standing right there. And maybe later I would also create a kit for a bigger one, if you are interested, please let me know in the comments. Going back to the plate for this robot, after machining and some cleaning I painted it black, because rolled plywood doesn't look really that professional in a robotic projects. And once it is painted, you can't really tell that it is plywood. I made two of these full plates and then one with cutouts for the motors and wheels. The diameter of each plate is 360 mm and lastly I designed a section of a plate that was added on the very top as a perfect place for a LiDAR or some other sensors. Once I had the plates there was a need to connect them all together and for that connectors are used. I designed a few basic connectors of different lengths and all of them can be found on the website as well. Here I'm using the 70mm version and all of them were 3D printed out of PLA on Ender 3 in black to match the plates. I am attaching the connectors to each plate now but I won't connect it all together just yet because it will be easier to add the holders and other components to the plates. Let's start with the holders for the motors. I'm using very fancy and expensive motors in this chassis but honestly if you need something cheaper and easier to use I would advise to add NEMA 17 or NEMA 23 stepper motors or any higher quality DC motor, preferably with an encoder. Cubemars actuators are awesome but are not really that necessary in this kind of use case. Tire is printed with flexible filament and features this special pattern to increase the traction. It is attached securely to the rim with screws that hide in the tire and then it is screwed into the motor with a few M4 screws. The combination of yellow and black is just as perfect as it can get. But these are just the two wheels and we need some more. That's why there are two rotating mini wheels attached to the bottom. This very compact design features tubi rings and even little tiny tires. It is so perfectly designed that it does not wobble at all now with additional wheels. 
Let me finish with the 3D printed holders and we'll move on to my custom PCB I made at home. So almost every part needs a holder or adapter to be mounted to a chassis. It's no different in case of this chassis, but the good thing is that it's easy to design because the whole pattern is always the same and you can attach it anywhere you want it because the whole pattern is exactly the same. And lastly, you can reuse your printed parts, the holders and everything else later in next robots because the whole pattern is exactly the same. It all works together. There is a holder for a power bank, Jetson Nano and the camera. Everything designed in a minimal fashion to be fast to print and use small amount of filament. And now let's move on to the PCB I made at home. This is the 1318 CNC machine I already made a video about. I had some bigger and better machines, so I converted this one to be used only for making PCBs. And it works. It's not perfect, but definitely much better than ironing your PCBs with the thermal transfer method. So I used it in the past a few times and I use it this time to make one simple PCB with Arduino Nano and CAN module to communicate with the motors. This board is a kind of a motor driver or rather an interface between Jetson or Raspberry Pi and motors. PCB was designed in KiCad and converted to G-code with FlatCam and then machined using CNCJS and special extension to level the PCB which is a very important step. Also, all the drilling was done with the CNC, but I always avoid doing the control cut as it makes a lot of noise and mess with this machine. If you are used to soldering perfect PCBs with solder mask, then this kind of PCB made at home is not as easy to solder, but still much better than a protoboard. And then, as a final touch, I use this amazing Bluetooth printer to print small labels that I cut to size and stick to the PCB to label all the connectors. And now, looking at this PCB after over a year, it really was worth it. Because this PCB was custom designed for this robot exactly, it already includes holes in the ORP standard, so I don't need any holder for it, only some distances that are also 3D printed. And that's it, you can attach the PCB directly to the robotic chassis, and in the future if I design more PCBs, that's how they should attach to the robotic chassis as well. And once you have all of your parts, you design them or download it from the library, mounting it is very easy and fun as everything just fits together so nicely and you can actually decide where to attach what at this point where you're actually assembling and you only need M3 screws and nuts. I won't really focus on programming and electronics. I will put some links in the description to my previous videos and some more information. This time I added a Raspberry Pi to this robot and I really wanted to make it RC controllable with an Xbox controller, but it was really hard for some reason. I just wasn't able to get it working, so I skipped that part. I showed you how this chassis work and what kind of projects you can build in my previous videos. And this one was mostly focused on actually building the chassis, on making the PCB, on machining the plates and connectors, and on showcasing the bigger chassis that you can build with an ORP project. Still, there is no ROS on the Raspberry Pi, but someday it will happen. I'm really eager to try finally ROS, but also I'm still a student at the university, I'm finishing my master's, and there is a lot of work with that. So once I finally finish my master's, which will hopefully happen in about six months, I will have a lot of time to start playing with ROS, Raspberry Pi's complex robots, and share all that hopefully here on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video about a robotic chassis, and if you did, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and checking out the links in the description. If you'd like to support my work, there is my Patreon, and there is the industry.cc store, all the links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye.